Hey, welcome to Zach Attack Reviews. Thank you for joining me for our review of Sharper. Streaming on Apple TV Plus and produced by A24, one of my favorite production companies doing it right now, or maybe even of all time. They do so many, so many bangers. This one is starring Julianne Moore, Sebastian Stan, Justice Smith, and much, much more. Is this movie a really good con artist psychological thriller, or is it just kind of run of the mill? That's what I'm going to break down when I break down the good and the bad of Sharper. Before I get into the premise and the rating, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you can be notified my reviews, reactions, and much, much more. Motivations are suspect and expectations are turned upside down in this tipsy, toppy, turny uh, movie of psychological thriller with a con artist takes on a Manhattan billionaire. Sharper is rated R for the language throughout and some sexual references. Let's start off with the good. So this movie is directed by Benjamin Karen, a director that I'm not super familiar with, but I want to get more familiar with his work after this directing job he did on this film. He did a really great job of capturing the atmosphere, the tension of every scene that he needed to do, and also framing it in a way and directing his actors in a way where he made you believe in certain aspects of the film at any point. He made you believe these two characters didn't like each other, but they were secretly they did. They made you believe that these two characters were related in a certain way and flipped it on your head and you're like whoa hold up there was so many tipsy topsy turns and the directing really helped with the how he framed the characters and made you feel the exact thing that you need to feel in that particular scene and it was really helped by the cinematography the interiors and the design of the sets were fantastic and really highbrow but the they the director and the cinematographer really used the shading inside of the room with the windows and the, sh and the shades and anything that was blocking view to really uh, set the tone and the mood for the characters and also the lighting, the natural lighting in New York City, the neon lights and things because this is set in Manhattan to really set up moods of like colors orange and red where there's danger or love. And I think they really did a good job overall with having the cinematography also uh, uplift the story as well. This is a twist filled movie a psychological thriller with con artists in it uh, movies like i care a lot the grifters the swindlers things like that is similar to but what makes this movie a little fresher than those is that we get the different points of view of different characters throughout and it's from the views of the con artists and the views of the victims and, and, and vice versa sometimes it flips and you're like wait i thought this people were doing the con artists and these were the victims and then it changes on you and they the way they start out and they flow into the film from each section from each character's point of view it really fleshes out the character so you understand their point of view why they're doing what they're doing and how it connects to the next character and i really like that way they did the film because I'm a big fan of when a movie has multiple storylines and it all kind of come together at the end to really make something impactful. And I think that they did a, a little bit of that here. Julianne Moore plays Madeline, who she does a fantastic job in this film throughout. She has She's tasked with doing a lot of different things in the film and she executes them all really well. She plays Madeline, who's a trophy white, to, to John Withlow's Richard, who's the billionaire she's married to. And while things seem like they're going well, her life get interrupted by her low life son, Max, played by Sebastian Stan. And those two have a very interesting relationship that takes a lot of turns throughout the film that I didn't expect. And they do have really good chemistry and are very engaging throughout the film. Mrs. Smith plays the son of the billionaire who's not really a big fan of the money. He really more into social just agendas and books. And he really wants to change the world by helping everybody. And he doesn't really think about getting money, honey, hungry or anything like that. He gets swindled out of $350,000, which really puts him in a bind. Cause not only is his heart broken for what happened, but it also puts him in a bad place with his father, because that's a lot of money to be losing. And he finds out that the person who, that conned him out of this money might be connected to his stepmom, which just adds another layer and intrigue to this thriller as the story progresses. Brianna Middleton, she plays Sandra, who I think she's the absolute standout in this film. I'm not super familiar with her, but I think she did a really great job of really standing on this film and playing multiple roles as well. She has many different looks and feels and what she has to do and is very layered. And I think she knocked out of the park and I'm really excited to see more of her. She plays Tom's love interest who gets mixed up in all the con artist part and the drama and all the action that goes on in the film and she plays different 
parts of it. She's connected to all the characters in different ways. She has a sh shadowy past that Tom slowly figures out and certain things happen to her that you understand where she's coming from, why she does what she does and where she's going. And she's out of all the characters. She feels like she had the best morality in the film. These four characters are the main characters in the story who you follow. There's the four sections that follow them, and that's how the acts are split up. And they all have fleshed out stories that come and intersect with each other and keeps the film engaging because they all have really good chemistry with one another. And the way the story comes together towards the end really, really, really made it worth the journey to watch throughout the film. Now let's get into the bad. So the movie stays at like a really steady pace. I think that the, the movie was well directed. It looks good. The music was solid and the acting was really good, but the screenplay never ramps up in a way where you feel like there's like a, you're leading to something big. When it gets to the point where it's get, going to end, I was like, wait, hold up. Really? We're at the end already? And I, it just really felt like it, it, kept, it went like this. And kind of just stayed like this throughout the film. It never ramped up to like other psychological thrills to a boiling point where it finally burst. There is a bursting point, but the way it was executed didn't feel that as impactful as I wanted it to be. So while the, it was still a solid ride and the ending is kind of satisfying, I felt like it never ramped up in a way to get really exciting. Which also holds back these interesting characters that they built up that had all these interesting past and different dynamics. And I think that they could have done a lot more with what they showed us and with the characters. They don't really get to shine bright, really bright at towards the end of the film. If you want to watch a con artist psychological thriller with a beautiful cast, great cinematography, and a decent story. If you're not super familiar with this genre, this is going to be really, really impressive for you. If you're somebody that's seen a lot of movies like this, then this is going to be a good watch. It's not revolutionary. It's not going to blow you away, but it's something that you can click on Apple TV Plus if you have that service and check it out. How I feel overall, I'm not upset that I watched this movie. I actually really liked it. I think that all the performance was really good. I enjoyed my time with the film. It could have been a lot better if they ramped up the intensity a little bit towards the end in a more meaningful way, especially with all the intersecting storylines. But overall, I think that they did a good job, and I'm really excited to see what some of the younger actors in this film do and what this director does because he does such a great directing job. So with that said, I'm going to give this film a C. Did you like it? Did you hate it? What would you rate sharper? Did you like the film? Let me know in the comments below. Tell me what your favorite parts are. And if you were on the edge or didn't even know about this film, are you going to check it out on Apple TV Plus? Let me know in the comments below. Like the video if you liked my review. Subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you can notify my reviews, reactions, ranking lists, live discussions, and much, much more. And you can watch more of my content right now.